next gay movement brought on Alveda King, the niece of Martin Luther King Jr. Because as the gay rights movement started talking about civil rights, um, they decided they'd bring in their own expert on civil rights, which is Alveda King, because she's the niece of Martin Luther King Jr. And in 2000, she was quoted as saying, I have met former homosexuals, but I have yet to meet a former black. Thus saying that the two are not equal. Um, anyway. Uh, Dr. Richard Cohen, or Mr. Richard Cohen, I should say, um, as we saw earlier, he was featured in CNN a couple of years ago. He was also back on a few weeks ago uh, on CNN uh, as a supposed expert on the issue of uh, sexual orientation. Hey, this is Teresa. This is difficult. She says, how should we, as parents of a homosexual son, handle the ongoing challenges facing us, such as staying true to our faith and following the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself? This is very difficult for us. Well, first of all, he's not your neighbor. He's your son. That's a different thing. You owe him, uh, uh, you know, advice and counsel and guidance. You're his parent. First of all, you didn't say how old he is. Secondly, I am not at all persuaded that uh, so-called homosexuals are homosexuals because of uh, uh, biological problems. There may be a very few, but there's so many that have been made homosexuals because of a coach or a guidance counselor or some other male figure who has abused them and they think there's something wrong with their sexuality. So you need to get deep into why he is what he is instead of just saying, well, he's a homosexual, so how do I handle him and, and how do I be Christian? Well, I think you ought to tell him, listen, son, uh, you know, here's what the Bible says about this, and it's called an abomination before God. So I've got to tell you the truth because I love you. That's what I think. All right, what else? And then you do that. You love him. You love him. <laughs> right. Of course you love him. And you accept him, you love him, but at the same time, you can't let him just go, you know, he'll Without wind up. knowing truth, yeah. Well, I mean, if somebody's on the way to hell, they'll, I mean, you've got to love them to rescue them. Uh, Pat Robertson's show reaches millions of people in the, in the United States and across the world. This is Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, who is a trained psychologist. He is one of the members of NARTH, and he will take uh, effeminate toddlers as young as three years old, and he will begin his own repair therapy on little children. Um, Mr. Uh, or Dr. Nicolosi has been um, at the forefront of a lot of gay rights issues, and uh, Dr. Phil saw fit to bring him on his TV show as an expert on an uh, issue dealing with transgender children. Uh, the American College of Pediatricians just uh, a couple of months ago sent out a letter to school superintendents all over the country. And you say, okay, what's the big deal? The American College of Pediatricians, aren't they that um, the, the group of doctors that deals with children's health issues? Well, actually, no. You're thinking of the American College of Pediatrics, not the American College of Pediatricians. Check out the logos. Um, check out their slogans. Turns out that the American College of Pediatricians, uh, some former board members include Dr. Joseph Nicolosi, who does preparative therapy on toddlers, Joseph Rinkers, the guy who went off to Europe with Rentboy, and uh, Mr. Goldberg, who is the convicted felon and the founder of Jonah, who is for, uh, for uh, Jewish people trying to overcome same sex attraction. So uh, these are some of the board members of the American College of for, uh, Pediatricians, so you can see what they did there, kind of sneaky. So they sent off this letter to uh, superintendents all over the country saying that there's no scientific evidence that an individual is born gay or transgender. The last sentence is also critical to understand that these conditions can respond well to therapy. Imagine being a, a school principal who just doesn't do his homework before reading it. This is all part of this big narrative. I mean, is it any wonder that in so many states that gay marriage is outlawed. This is part of this big narrative that is working against gay rights. Um, the idea that homosexuality is a condition that can be changed. Um, this is a very powerful, very well-funded, very well-organized movement, and it is working. I mean, by comparison, I mean, these are the states that allow uh, marriage between first cousins compared to those that allow same-sex marriage. Um, an Iowa law lawmaker wants to strip uh, the ability of LGBT families to camp at campgrounds and to get the same family rate as heterosexual families. 
Um, gay students in uh, Missouri found out that she was cut out from the yearbook when she decided to pose in a tuxedo instead of a dress. In Virginia, the governor stripped out civil uh, rights protections or discrimination against uh, gays and lesbians uh, in their uh, state codes for employment so that you can now discriminate against somebody for their sexual orientation when deciding whether or not to hire them. Oklahoma tried to do the same thing, but they cited the wrong code, so they actually accidentally stripped out protections for race and religion instead. <laughs> <laughs> Serves all right. <laughs> and then there's Mr. Caleb Lee Brundage. Uh, Mr. Brundage is a pastor with Extreme Prophetic Ministries based out of Phoenix, Arizona. That's him all the way on the right. Um, some of his activities include creating techno music for Jesus. Um, he does this electronic music and throws these big waves where they have glow sticks and uh, people riding and dancing. I don't know if they have E for Jesus yet. <laughs> but I would try that. Um, Mr. Brundage is also involved in a mortuary ministry where he goes around to uh, uh, funeral homes and mortuaries and he prays over the dead. He uh, tells people that I can help raise your loved one from the dead if you let me pray over him for a while. I'm guessing it hasn't worked out too well for him. I'm sure we'll hear it in the news if it ever does. Um, uh, Mr. Brundage is also a former homosexual. He has gone through these ex-gay programs. He is one of the referral therapists on Richard Cohen's website. And um, I met uh, Caleb at the uh, Journey into Manhood weekend in Arizona, the 48-hour uh, touch weekend. He was, one of the he was one of the counselors there. And the month after I met him, he then traveled to Uganda, where he spoke to uh, newspapers. He participated in this big three-day conference there. He was interviewed by national newspapers. He was on the radio. He was on television. He also addressed Parliament. And he told Parliament about his own story coming out of homosexuality. Um, about the situation in Uganda, he later reported that gay activists are recruiting children and they're paying them to pretend to be gay, to artificially up the numbers of, of gays in Uganda. He knows this because a school teacher was told that by two of his students and then they later told him. I guess that's authoritative, I don't know. Um, the month after Mr. Brundage went to Uganda, Parliament, Parliament began drafting the anti-homosexuality bill of 2009. This has been in the news, you probably heard of it. Um, it would execute HIV-positive men who were caught having sex. It would send people to prison for failing to report homosexual activity. It would send people to prison for standing up for gay rights or for helping um, gay-friendly organizations such as the UN and their uh, program to distribute condoms or to help out with AIDS treatment and research. Here in America, um, Desert Stream, a ministry based out of California that uh, takes teenagers and tries to make them straight. One of the counselors was recently caught um, sexually abusing one of the teenagers there. One young man was forced to attend an next day program after his parents hacked into his college email account and saw the, the exchange between himself and his boyfriend. So they said, if you don't go off to camp, we're going to pull your college funding. So he went off to the 14-week camp and he hasn't been heard from since. Then there's a Love in Action. Uh, DJ Butler was a young man who ran away from home. His dad tracked him down, put him in handcuffs, and then dropped him off at Love in Action in Tennessee, where they told him, if you leave, we'll call the authorities on you, and you will go to prison. There's a student at Kansas State who recently talked about his own experiences in reparative therapy when he was a young man. He came out to his parents, and they shipped him off to a psychologist well, one of the first things that they did is they took blocks of ice and they, they strapped the blocks of ice onto his palms so that he couldn't drop them. And they showed him images of men in intimate positions and embraces. That didn't work, so the next session they took heating pads and then they strapped those to his hands and showed him more intimate images of men um, either kissing more deeply um, or in sexual positions. Of course, that didn't work, so they showed the young man more graphic images, but this time they hooked him up to electrodes. Very thin needles were inserted into my fingers, on all ten fingers, still strapped down, and then the rest of my body was strapped down because they knew what was going to happen. As the man turned on the electricity, the pain was so horrible, Swanson still cannot understand why his mother sat in the lobby and 
and did not raise to rescue him as he 